All right, good afternoon. It is Friday evening, going into the Grand Finals weekend of OSU World Cup 2021 here. Um, and I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about the first match over the week, which is going to be the Losers Bracket Final tomorrow. It's going to be featuring Germany and South Korea. Of course, uh, two teams that have looked very good over the course of the tournament that have taken a little bit of different routes uh, to get to where they are in the top three this weekend. So, of course, Germany making it to the winner's final this year, uh, dropping to United States in that bracket or in that uh, tiebreaker match. And uh, South Korea, who have gone through quite a few matches in loser's bracket since dropping to the United Kingdom several weeks ago. Um, and so this is just a little bit of how I kind of approach as a commentator and somebody who wants to, you know, kind of have some insight onto what the match is likely to play out as. Um, this is how I go into kind of doing a little bit of, of research on the matter. So uh, this here is my my kind of cheat, my cheat sheet, as it were. So uh, what I like to do is pretty simple. Um, I will bring up the MP link, list out, you know, the maps that are played who is in for them, what kind of score they get, um, and what kind of accuracy and miscount they get. Because I think that gives me a pretty good feel um, of how well people are playing, how many maps they're in for, obviously objective, you know, kind of the scores they're getting. I don't really like using average scores because those, um, obviously you would need to normalize and that's some extra work and it just doesn't really feel that necessary because I think I still get a pretty good feel of things without it. Um, and then I'll as well take their match costs from the page. Um, using this little handy dandy match costs from OSU plus um, using the I use the flashlight formula um, and so that gives us this uh, this data up here that's gonna show player names map counts and uh, the the match cost well and then I list out the maps that were played in each match so you'll see you know South Korea has two sets because they played two matches in losers bracket uh, Germany just has the one, but they've got a lot of data because they played 13 maps going all the way to tiebreaker. And then down here is where we do a little bit of uh, a little bit of digging. Um, so these are going to be the maps that were played in common from the, between the two teams. Um, you have one column for the score that Korea got in their first match, column for the score Korea got in their second match, the average of those two, then Germany. And then you have the, the, differ the differences in the scores. So diff one is Germany's score minus Korea's first score. Diff 2 is Germany's score minus Korea's second score. And then different diff average is Germany's score uh, minus Korea's average score. I did it that way just because that way I have a consistent one that I'm subtracting by. Um, you could do it either way. I mean, the difference is going to come out and it doesn't matter. It's just whether or not it has a minus sign in front of it. Um, and so looking through these matches, it was kind of interesting to see um, kind of some different strategies, you know, against the different teams that they played. South Korea took on Hong Kong and Canada, 1-7-2 and 7-5. Uh, Germany played the United States, who is a team that they're very kind of diametrically opposed in terms of skill sets from, um, and they lost in that tiebreaker. But I think a couple of things uh, really stand out to me in these matches, um, and, and I want to talk about, you know, kind of a couple factors that are going to play out, I think, in, uh, in the match tomorrow. So... Uh, you know, you have different skill sets, obviously, that get played, uh, different types of maps. You know, there's aim maps, there's, you know, left hand, the kind of stamina and speed maps, uh, the more gimmicky types of maps. Um, there's, you know, kind of what they're picking and banning, how they're adapting to their opponents, um, their ability to play to the occasion. Um, and then, you know, kind of their depth and question marks in that regard. So one of the biggest question marks for me in this match is going to be South Korea's depth in their roster. Um, as you can see in these two statistic fields, you have three players that are really not playing much, if at all. Their first match, Zayson played two maps, Maez played zero, Ranka J played zero. Their second match, Maez again played, Maez this time played two maps, Zayson played one, Ranka J played zero. So that means if you're South Korea, you're coming into this match against Germany with more or less five players, maybe six. You know, Zayson will probably be in for a couple of picks depending on how the pick and ban process goes. Um, Maez similarly will be in for a couple at most. Um, Ranka J doesn't look like he's playing at all. So you're really relying on Tuna, Karuna, um, Karcher, and then depending on, again, you know, what gets picked and banned, um, some Nope KJK for some of the hiddens and things like that. Um, Doomsday Fanboy came in and played some of this, some of the mechanics maps really well. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it's the core, you know, Flying Tuna, Karuna, um, and Karcher. 
and a little bit of note KJK if they go more into the gimmick stuff, a little more of Karcher if they go more into the mechanics types of maps. Meanwhile, in the Germany match against the United States, you had Dust Ice in for all but one map, you had White Cat in for all but two maps, Kriller in for nine, Okinamo in for eight, Hallow and Rising in for four each, Umbra and KHD in for two each. So what that says to me is that Germany um, is a little bit more of a balanced roster. They have a little more depth. They have ability to fill players in a little more easily. Um, once you get into these late stages of a tournament, you get into the finals, grand finals, the pools get very hard. And that's where those seventh and eighth guys really start to show, you know, whether or not they're actually worth having on this roster. Rank a J for South Korea really doesn't look like he's he's got that going for him. Um, whereas on the Germany side, they have a couple players who are in for a couple of maps around, but they're coming in and typically, you know, putting up decent scores on them. Um, so I think that's going to be something to look out for is whether... Germany can make use of the fact that they have a more full roster available to them for these late stage matches with still having eight people who can mostly play the pool pretty well versus a South Korea team that kind of can't say the same thing. You have South Korea coming in with, you know, three players, maybe four that are going to be their core, and then they kind of just fall off from there um, outside of a couple of very specific situations. Um, you know, the new players on that team as well, we don't know what they're going to so much look like on a grand finals pool. Um, you know, we haven't seen Maez in an OWC before. We haven't seen Rank J in an OWC before. Uh, nope, KJK, we'll see how he does in the late round. Same for Doomsday Fanboy. You know, they don't have a lot of known factors, and that's going to play, I think, a big part um, in how this match ends up playing out. Um, I, another big one for me is, is just going to be the top end star power. So... Each of these teams has one of the best players left in the tournament. Flying Tuna for South Korea and White Cat for Germany. White Cat against the United States. This match cost, by the way, I think is, is wrong. My match cost bot's having some trouble, so this is going to be a little under the scores. His his match cost for that USA match was over two. Um, he came in and played 11 maps. I've seen five of them. Dude was just on a rampage. And if he can pull that out again this weekend it's going to be a very difficult time for South Korea because that's a lot to try to compete with. But Flying Tuna, if anybody's going to stand up to White Cat in that match, it's got to be Tuna. You know, he plays just about everything as well. If not everything, he's in for pretty much every pick, every skill set. He is very skillful in a lot of different areas. And so I think that's one thing that they're actually kind of evenly matched on. I think Tuna has the ability to match White Cat, but that's where that depth comes in. If Tuna matches White Cat, Karna Karcher have to really step up behind him because more likely than not, Germany is going to have, they'll have Dust Dice, they'll have Kriller, Okinama, whoever it may be for a given map. They're going to have those guys coming in behind them um, as really proven factors, you know, and I think it's going to be tough for South Korea, but um, if their core can can hold up through a lengthy best of 13 match, then they may, uh, they may be able to take advantage of the fact that Tuna will likely be able to match White Cat, and I have a hard time imagining White Cat plays quite as well as he did last week, if only because that was like the match of a lifetime. I mean, there's very few people who can play like that week in and week out. Um, you know, even even Vaxa has his down matches, right? You know, we saw it last year in, in Grand Finals. Um, so it's tough to reach that level time and time again. There's not many people like that. So we'll have to see how things go in that regard on that kind of star power front. Um, I think for this match, we're going to have to see a little more consistency out of some players too. One one interesting point that I noticed in the South Korea-Canada match, um, you had Doomsday Fanboy playing seven maps. And look at what he did here. He went from a couple of lower scores out for a couple maps. Then he went FC, bottom score, FC. This is the most like wild three-map swing from Nomad 2 FC... Hard Rock 2 bottom score, DT1 FC, and then a lower score on Free Mod 3 and a bottom score. Fortunately, they still won this, a bottom score on No Mod 4. So, you know, some of the inconsistency there is not the greatest. I mean, he comes in for Hard Rock 2, 19 misses, not the best. Comes in for No Mod 2, comes in for DT1 FC. So, you know, if players like that can get their consistency up a little bit, that's going to be really important. You know, you saw what White Cat did where, you know, it's FC. FC, top score, top score, top score. Oops. Um, finally has a poor performance on one map that they still end up winning anyway. Top score, near top score, top score, near top score, top score. Like the dude was just at the top the entire time. And that's kind of to be expected. 
but you know it, it, it's the next player up right who's the next guy behind that that's going to be able to put up that kind of you know high score performance over and over you know we saw rising really having a tough day against the usa the only one to not put up an s rank on dt3 which they smashed us on um bottom score on dt4 bottom score on dt2 uh really didn't have a great time of things unfortunately and so you know it's it's things like that you know those rising lower scores the doomsday fanboy really up and down um whichever team can kind of be a little more consistent with those guys i think that's going to be a big part of who you know can take advantage of maybe a break point here and there um some of the streakiness kind of came into play as well you know this match you can kind of throw out a little bit because hong kong was just not as good they weren't up to the task on that day on that pool they were outskilled by then not much you can do about it um but this canada match you know korea drops the first two maps wins the next two maps drops two wins three uh, drops another break point and then gets fortunate to get a break point right back after Canada maybe overconfidently picked another free mod after winning the previous one. Um, same thing kind of happened to Germany. You know, the first four picks went as expected and then things got really weird in that match, right? You had USA winning two points in a row, Can uh, Germany winning two points in a row, USA winning two points in a row, <laughs> Germany winning two points in a row. Like, you know, there's just back and forth. Nobody able to uh, feel comfortable on their own picks for a consistent amount of time. Uh, it says a lot about the prep, says a lot about how well teams are feeling going into the matches. Um, and I think it feels to me like Germany was maybe just a little bit out of sorts at times during that United States match. You know, this was a match that they could have easily won had things gone a little differently. Maybe if the DT2 uh, was a map that was slightly more favored to them because you would expect it to normally be. Um, and it didn't end up working out in their favor. They really had a poor showing, didn't have a single FC, uh, dropped it pretty badly, rising again, 483k, can't really afford that in, in that sort of situation. Uh, so if somebody can get kind of consistent, you know, get into that situation where you win a break point, win your next point, and just keep winning your point, it's your picks. Um, you know, if you can win your picks, you don't have to worry about much else. As long as you get one break point somewhere or other, you're going to win the match eventually if you win all your own picks. You know, you, you, the, the strategy of approaching this and having the best picks in mind, and I think that's something that certain teams have been very good at and other teams have been not as strong at. Um, and both of these teams definitely struggled with it last week with giving up some break points in inopportune moments. So that's going to be something to look out for as well as, you know, who can hold on on some of these consistency picks, who can hold on, um, you know, on some of the picks that maybe they aren't as favored on and try to find a break point, or, you know, if they have to coin flip a map later on in a match, you know, maybe uh, find a way to win that. You know, Korea had the Nomad 4 left against Canada. Uh, Germany had the Hard Rock 1 left against the United States. They left themselves with good points, with good picks near the end of matches and were able to win them. But it was to force a tiebreaker in the case of Germany, which they ended up losing. And that's something that's, you know, a tricky situation to be in. They made the most of it, went to the tiebreaker, lost it. But, um, you know, that shows some mental fortitude from that team. And that's something we haven't had to see out of South Korea. They've had a very easy run of things in the loser's bracket. Really haven't been challenged all that much. Um, but coming into a grand finals weekend matchup, it's going to, I think, be a lot more taxing on them. And when you have guys like Tuna Karcher, uh, Karuna coming into a grand finals loser's bracket final weekend, and having to play that as many maps as they do without really the ability to ever have someone switch out because they don't have the depth of the roster, you know, having to have that stamina and that fortitude over the course of an entire match can get very different. And Germany has been tested by that against the United States in that winner's final. So they might have a little bit of an advantage there just from having been really pushed and unfortunately find that loss, whereas South Korea has not been challenged, um, you know, in a, in a little while. Um, and, you know, to look at some, some things objectively, um, they had a lot of maps in common. That's what happens when one team plays two matches, the other team plays a tiebreaker match. Uh, you have 11 maps in common, which is actually kind of nuts. I mean, the only, I think the only maps that weren't in common, uh, that Germany didn't play, or Germany played that SK didn't, I mean, it's like, maybe what a, there was a hidden two free mod one and three and then i mean they played what germany did germany played double time three south korea didn't it's a, it's a pretty short list but um what it ended up at was south korea winning a lot of these points in common you know south korea won dt2 in common which is crazy to think of when you consider germany is so strong in mechanics uh south korea won 
actually all three DTs they had in common. Double time four, not surprising. Double time one, very close, but the 312K um, on the DT2, kind of an interesting one. Germany smoked them. I mean, 473K on the free mod two, not inconsiderable. Basically a dead heat on hidden one and hidden three. Those average scores coming out very, very close. Sub 50K on both. That's a coin flip. I mean, that's, you know, who, who misses one time. Um, then you had South Korea, interestingly, winning on Hard Rock 1. So that's thinking maybe their mechanics are pretty strong. Just maybe. We didn't. We aren't surprised by that. Uh, South Korea smashes them again on both Hard Rock 3 and Nomad 4. So again, uh, South Korea very, very good at some of these uh, gimmicky types of picks as well. Very good at Hard Rock 3. They put up some really good scores on that in both matches they played. Very good at Nomad 4. Germany did not have a good time on that Nomad 4. It was a very difficult one, but Germany really did poorly. Um, and then Nomad 6, which is another gimmick, but, you know, a different sort of gimmick. It's finger control rhythm. Uh, wins it by 7.3k. Like, that's, again, just a toss-up. That's 0.1% accuracy. Um, and so what this says to me is that it's going to be a very difficult match to predict. And I know that's not why I'm here. But... Uh, it means that the teams are just really evenly matched at this stage of the tournament on paper. You know, South Korea maybe looks better at gimmick stuff. That's kind of to be expected. That's not traditionally been Germany's forte. Um, but they won a couple of the comparison points on mechanics picks as well. Um, you know, coming out and winning the DT1 and the DT2. Um, and, you know, performing pretty admirably on, you know, the Hard Rock as well. 239k winning that. So... South Korea, if they look at things like this, if they're looking at things on paper, are going to come in and not be feeling too bad. Um, you know, 9-5 to five overall between the, the first and second runs counted individually. 2-1 uh, to one on those three maps that they played twice, so the averages. It is deceptive, I think, to look at these statistics because they didn't play them against each other. But if you just compare scores in a vacuum, South Korea looks very good. They are looking good on all types of picks. And, you know, if they ban out whatever, you know, one area is that they feel really bad at, which I think, you know, Germany precision is kind of insane. Um, so you maybe look at banning out the small circle map, uh, maybe ban out like a, a raw mechanics, I think. Um, you know, something like a, a DT2 or a Nomad 5, something along those lines could be a ban for South Korea because Germany's speed, obviously unquestioned, uh, top of the top of the crop in this tournament um, you give yourself an opportunity to really get into some of those otherwise Germany favored skill sets with a bit of confidence coming in um, you know on the side of Germany I think they want to ban out the gimmick stuff just like they did against the United States they don't want to have to play um, the tech picks I don't think against the South Korea team because they're just way better um, flying tuna one of the best tech players in the world doesn't really matter um, what Germany does. I don't think they have an answer for that. So maybe a Nomad 4, um, you know, and then just depending on how they feel about other maps in this week's pool, you know, a, a Hard Rock tech pick or um, something along those lines, you know, it's a little, it's a little difficult to predict because this is obviously the first match we're going to be seeing on this pool. So there's not going to be a lot of data on the matter. Um, but like this Hard Rock 3 is really, really difficult. This Hard Rock 2 is really difficult. Um, I could see a, a world in which both those get banned out. Um, you know, the Nomad 4, Halgo, Sharu, uh, you know, people would joke around about it being kind of slider vomit, um, but that could be the type of thing that uh, Germany doesn't want to let South Korea play. But hidden two, another skill set that Germany isn't going to feel too great about, I don't think. So that, you know, they've got some different things to consider going into that ban phase. Um, on the other side, you know, South Korea looked good on Nomad 2. We'll probably leave that up. But, you know, Nomad 5, DT2, DT3. I think those are probably the three spots that you're looking at South Korea to ban just to get rid of those mechanics because that's the overwhelming strength of uh, this German roster. And so with that all said, I feel that this is going to be a very, very competitive match. I think both teams will come into it prepared. I think both teams looked very good last weekend. You know, South Korea two wins by a total score of 14 to seven. Uh, Germany with the loss again in a tiebreaker against the United States. Can't really fault them there. United States had been the best team in the tournament for four years now. They're looking the same this year again. Um, so both teams will feel pretty good about themselves, I think, coming into this one. But um, if I had to pick one, I think Germany wins on depth. I think it's going to be hard for South Korea to match up to the fact that Germany still has 
a full roster of players that will be doing pretty well in this pool. South Korea is going to be very heavily reliant on their top couple of players, and if any of them have even a slightly off day, they're going to have a rough time trying to win this match, and I think that is probably what will be their downfall in the end. They've gotten through the loser's bracket on the back of those players carrying them and getting some decent performances in from some of their uh, fill players when needed, but I think Germany being able to bring in their superior depth, their superior mechanics, and their late round scaling, as well as the fact that they have just been there and they feel like they deserve to be there, and they really Really want that rematch with the United States. I think Germany ends up taking it on the back of those things. I think it's maybe one, two break points at most, something like a 7 4 or a 7 5 score. And I think we end up seeing Germany coming out of this one in the losers' bracket final, going back to top two and getting their grand finals rematch of the finals rematch of last year's grand finals rematch against the United States on Sunday. If you think differently, feel free to let me know. If you've got any uh, opposing viewpoints, feel free to let me know. Um, that's just how I see it. I'm just one person just looking at some data on a spreadsheet. Um, so please feel free to talk about that. Um, but, you know, I, I'll try to, to look at discussions if they, uh, if they occur. And uh, maybe I'll change my viewpoint on it. Maybe I won't. You never know. But either way, it's going to be a great match. Can't wait to see everybody there. Can't wait to see everybody in the Grand Finals. I'll be commentating that one either Saturday night in my time zone if South Korea wins, Sunday afternoon um, if Germany ends up winning this match, as I think they will. So we'll be seeing you guys tomorrow. We'll be seeing you guys Sunday for Grand Finals Weekend, Oaks World Cup 2021. See you later.